Let's start this uh, newscast with Kabul, where 90 people, remember, were killed in a massive explosion. The Afghanistan Interior Ministry has now claimed that the Haqqani network is the one behind the deadly attack that struck the capital city early this morning. Initial reports say that Afghanistan is also pointing towards Pakistan's involvement in the attack. Joining me live on the broadcast for more on that story is former intelligence officer and author Glenn Carl. He joins in from Massachusetts. Uh, Glenn, thanks for being with us. Uh, very quickly, to recap uh, what's happened, a lot of people are saying that the United States uh, also plays a part in what's happening in the region, and rightly so. Doesn't the CIA play both sides, Glenn? Uh, Raymond Davis, for an example, doesn't the flirtation with the ISI come at a cost, and isn't it time for the U.S. to stop? <laughs> Tough question. It's a uh, accepted perspective, I think, the one that you, uh, a widely shared perspective, rather, the one that you, you spell out. I, I don't really uh, agree with that, however. Uh, two points. It's also generally said, well, the CIA's involvement in uh, with the Mujahideen against the Soviets created Islamic extremism. And that's simply not true. It is true that American provided money and weapons were funneled by ISI to uh, Arab uh, factions fighting the Mujahideen who uh, were extremists. We always refused and never did that at all. So yes, our involvement indirectly uh, fomented this, but, but we expressly tried to stop that while trying to stop the Soviets uh, in Afghanistan too. The second thing is, playing both sides. Well, it is true that we have a relation the United States does with Pakistan as close as possible and uh, intelligence relations with ISI. But in so doing, we attempt to stop them or get them to stop uh, their support for uh, terrorist groups, obviously without dramatic success. The assessment has been that we have more to gain by engaging with them than would be the case if we were to uh, withdraw any relations. We would we anticipate or assess that things would get even worse, but it's not a satisfying situ situation to anybody. Right, but Glenn, I'm talking about 90 people dead today, scores others in different incidents. Aren't these numbers enough to indicate that there is no positive coming out of this flirtation, that Pakistan is not providing the United States or any other country with any sort of positive from uh, this dalliance, if you will. Isn't that enough to stop or to reconsider the policy, at least, when it comes to Pakistan? I think it certainly should, you always should reconsider. You never should take anything as a given and as a set position, absolutely. And this is a hideous event. Uh, and sadly, not a surprising one, actually. However, uh, there are many, many instances over the past 16 years and, and many more before that uh, of uh, actions taken by the Pakistani government and ISI against terrorists. Now, they will only act against terrorists who they consider to be a threat to themselves while engaging with those that are a threat to Afghanistan and India and the United States. That's not satisfactory, but so far the assessment has been we have benefited more by trying to keep Pakistan from spinning completely out of control and to have them do what they are willing to against terrorists whom we don't like uh, ourselves uh, while trying to rein in these other activities without succeeding. It's a fair question, though, to say at what point do you say enough is enough? Um, the, the assessment has been, and it's one that I continue to share, I think, that, that uh, on balance, frustrating as it is, we probably gain more by engaging with Pakistan, and we must be engaged with them, than by uh, making them a complete pariah. But uh, Glenn, you know, Pakistan's constantly accused of using this good terrorist and bad terrorist policy. To me, what you're saying, and uh, by extension, what the, the intelligence community or perhaps the United States is saying, is perhaps the very same thing that, uh, you know, to get information on the bad terrorists, we have to cultivate uh, some good terrorists. What's the difference then between what, the, what Pakistan's doing and what the United States is? I'm not sure I completely follow. I mean, our, our position has been 
we would say to ISI, I'll simplify, of course, you know, stop all support for terrorism, help us uh, uh, go after, choose the terrorist group or individuals. And sometimes they will agree and, and provide uh, assistance or conduct operations themselves. And other times they will just give us a lot of nonsensical talk and, or, and denials. Um, rather than uh, the reality being that the U.S. by working with ISI is, if I understood the, the, the rationale, um, in some way indirectly supporting Haqqani. We've been trying to kill Haqqani for 15 years. Uh, so it's incredibly frustrating uh, and very dissatisfying, and it's hideous that anyone die and that uh, any terrorism be used for any purpose. Uh, but uh, that's that's how we have attempted to approach it, the feeling being that uh, a collapsed Pakistan is worse if one has to balance something. A, a, a utterly collapsed society and government is worse than a struggling one that has terrorists that do bad things. Stay with me, Glenn. Uh, I'd like to uh, take our viewers through also a conversation we had earlier with uh, Najibullah Azad. He is the spokesperson for the Afghan president. We spoke to him about this latest development. Listen in to our conversation. Well, uh, the very initial report to which uh, uh, I uh, was released in a, in a press release an hour ago by NGS, National uh, Directorate of Security, the uh, intelligence agency of Afghanistan. The initial findings are saying that the attack was carried out in, uh, by, by uh, Haqqani Network in Pakistan with the help of ISI. This is the very initial report uh, uh, after the uh, initial investigation. We are thoroughly investigating this case, this attack, and we will have for more details in, uh, uh, in coming 24 to 48 hours, but the very first hint and very initial report says that the attack was carried out by the Akani network in Pakistan with the help of uh, ISI. Let's go back to Glenn Carl. He joins us from Massachusetts. Uh, Glenn, I suppose uh, the conversation uh, continually goes back to what happens next, what needs to be done next to deal with the, this situation. Uh, President Trump was in uh, the Middle East very recently. It seems that any questions on his foreign policy as far as the Middle East uh, have now been answered. He has uh, very categorically uh, said that he, he, and, uh, he stands by Saudi Arabia and vice versa. What exactly does this mean then for the United States fight against terror uh, if we're holding hands on one hand with, the, with Saudi Arabia and Sunni Islam, hardline Sunni Islam, how can we expect the United States at the same time to fight against uh, terrorist forces that uh, apply the same ideology? Uh, well, I think that's a very good question. And there are so many contradictions in uh, and counterproductive uh, implications in, into what uh, Trump has announced in, in his Middle Eastern trip. At the same time that we now have agreed to sell the $110 billion of weapons to Saudi Arabia, uh, we know that uh, some elements of the Saudi uh, Saudi institutions are supporting uh, jihadists and, and ISIS in Syria, while other elements are saying that they oppose it. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. So what you can anticipate, I think, from the United States are a series of um, uh, tactical counter-terrorist operations. Uh, which uh, superficially seem to do good things. If you go and kill a terrorist or you t you strike, that seems to be taking action. And but the structural, the underlying policies, uh, probably are not uh, in line with uh, what we're seeking to achieve, which is to reduce the support for these groups and the likelihood that they would uh, they would rise. It's Saudi Arabia has always played a double game, just like Pakistan, and. Uh, the U.S. Uh, has sort of brushed that over. Uh, Obama uh, s refused to wed American policy forever to uh, Saudi Arabia and the Sunni, uh, and that's all being jettisoned now. So I, I don't see, uh, frankly, strategic uh, sense to the decision, uh, while tactically uh, you can anticipate continued aggressive counterterrorist actions by special forces and CIA and so on. 